Mazda Milwaukee results are in. Chosen best in fishing is Milwaukee Offshore Fishing Charters. Relax on Lake Michigan's wide open water and enjoy a true fishing adventure. At Milwaukee Offshore Fishing Charters, we have fun and catch huge king salmon and trout. We use high-tech lures and equipment to ensure the most fish every trip. We have three custom fishing boats that can handle large groups. Children welcome. Call now, 414-553-9800, 414-553-9800, or visit us at MilwaukeeOffshoreFishing.com. Book now. Welcome everyone to the 2024 Derby City Classic here in Elizabeth, Indiana at the Caesars, Southern Indiana. I am Brian Hallelujah Holland Hollenbeck in the booth of me is Dale. Little Chatter. Lorenz. What's happening everybody? We have another one pocket match for you right now coming up between Paul Song and Eric Withrow. Should we get them started? Let's get them started. Yeah, we'll get them started because uh, we're a little, well, tournament's a little bit behind right now so we're gonna <laughs> we're good we're good yep all right so i don't know did they did they flip or lag yet or not i'm not quite Me sure either. okay so they're gonna lag it out here so we're gonna get you to the overhead view as they shake hands and we will see who is going to break. Uh, looks like Paul's going to be a little strong. Oh, never mind. A little strong. Oh, well. All right. Well, a week. Eric was right on the money with that one. All right, Eric to break first. All right, while they're breaking, or uh, while Eric is racking, I'm going to give you a little synopsis of what that scoreboard means on the bottom. Right in the middle is uh, outer peens, uh, outer peens. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Who is that? Okay, it's been a long day. No more, uh, no more beer for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Somebody, some hot chick bought me a Miller Lite. Oh wait, I paid Chip? for it. I bought it. What <laughs> the? <laughs> right next to the Outer Point streaming logo in the middle, you've got a number three, which is the race. First one to win three games of one pocket advances as the winner. Right next to that is the running ball count, tally of balls pocketed. And if you're already watching this, then you know in one pocket, the first one to make eight balls uh, wins the game. So on the very outside is the running tally of games one. All right, we are set to break in rack number oh. one. Of course, Eric's going the other way, so I got to change the names around. Dang it all. So what we've done for you to make it easier is put the names of the player's pocket 
right next to the pocket. That way, if you take a break and come back, you don't get confused as to which pocket yeah. is which. Yeah, if you got to take the dog out to pee, or if you got to do that yourself, make some popcorn, cut the pizza, whatever you got to do, and you come back, and we're like, oh, hey, there's, that's Paul's pocket there. All brilliance. Right. It's brilliance. I'm telling you. There we go. All right. So, Paul up at the table here. You know, I wonder if uh, which I could get compensated from. What's he doing? Right. He's while well, he's practicing. Okay. Um, you think I could get like a copyright or something on that? What the names by the pockets? Probably. I think I could make some money on it, huh? Probably like five bucks. Well, you know, it's like everybody else. Paul got one. Um. You know, because it's happened before. It has. There is, uh, there's another stream that we know of that has copied several of the things that we do. Yes. So but I wouldn't be surprised. But oh, wait. They don't do one pocket anyway. But claims yeah. that we stole. Yeah. That we steal. It happens. It happens. It happens. But All right. So Paul ended up, or Eric, Eric broke and actually ended up putting a ball out there for Paul to make. He made that ball, but unfortunately it came into a spot where yeah, he's rolled up into not a good position. I don't know. He's looking at a combo. He's looking at the 110 off the two combo, I think. Not quite sure if that's the... Okay, so he's going to try to draw back. Get back in right up against the 12. Oh, no. Oh, he tried to make that. Well, it was good effort. Unfortunately, that's going to cost him a couple balls. One for sure. I like the aggressive break, though. Er Eric's aggressive. going to have to get uh, get some shape on this 15. Yeah, he's going lefty. Now he's coming up for the eight. Well done. <coughs> I like that because now he can actually float over. Float over for the 15. But what he does want to do is after the 15, he wants to see if he can somehow get the 3 and the 11 out of there. I think he can easily get down by the 15 on this mm -hmm. oh yeah beautiful i think he's more concerned over yep yeah yeah he might actually be okay there he might be able to actually draw into i mean like a power draw well if he draws pull, yeah, dr pull back into that three ball well he might even actually come above it if he comes above it to the rail yeah, if he were to come above it into the rail, he could have possibly made the three ball as well. Well. But now he's stuck. He can he actually. No, he can. Uh, yeah. It's a very thin cut, but he can still cut that four ball, I believe. But I think he's just going to. Yeah, I don't think he wants to chance that because if he does. If he doesn't, then he's given up two balls probably. Right. He's pa he's thinking this over. Yeah, I'd say carry him off the 11 and the 3. No, that was a nice shot. Got both of those balls out of there. That was a tricky shot, but he did well at it. So Paul is going to take this 3 ball and give it a ride up table. And try to get the cue ball possibly maybe right back into that group of balls. He doesn't want to come short because if he comes short, then the four ball is a, is a possible, a viable option to bank back to the other side. So he wants to make sure he gets, if he's getting in the pack, he wants to get up near the one and 13. 
but he doesn't want to go into them hard, though. Or just come below it. Just come straight back down to the middle of the table. On the rail. Oh, he went up the table. Oh, All I right. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm missing one here. Am I? It's 2-2, two, two, right? No. Should equal four. I'm gonna I'm gonna look behind the table real quick. Yeah, I don't, actually I don't even know. I think it's two to two. It might it might be. All right, so once again, the one job that Dale has to do gets failed again because he's busy turning around looking at uh, the other table or. Uh, on his phone, so that gives actually Eric a three to two lead. Why did you do that? Because now there's 10 balls left on the table uh, instead of. Yeah, well that was Eric that just made a ball, not Paul. If it's 2-2, two, two, Eric just made a ball, so it should be 3-2. That's Eric at the table. I know that. Okay. He just made a ball. Paul is, is Paul was up 3-1. to one. Oh, he was yeah. up 3-1? to one? Now I have to go and look at it again. <laughs> Are you sure? Because <laughs> it couldn't have because Paul made two balls. All righty. If he were to pay attention, we might not have this issue. I'm thinking it's four to one. Yep, Eric has four, Paul has one. Hey, Eric, four to one. And now we just need Dale to pay attention. <laughs> huh? Huh? What'd you say? Yeah. All right, we're going to mute this right now because I'm sure yeah, this we is got pretty loud. A lot of guys. loud. There's an announcement going on for the Bigfoot, so we're going to mute this real quick. All right, now that those announcements are over. So Paul is going to attempt to get this, but I don't know how he's in. This is going to be tough to get this out of here. He might just be making it. Yep, make it, bring it up table. So that's going to give Eric another one as Dale turns around. Not paying attention to our match. Shut it. Mm-hmm. This is why the score gets messed up. Shut it. You said it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, 
was a that was a pretty uh, pretty sporty shot by Paul. Those two balls over there. It's gonna give Eric a tough time to, to get those balls out of there. I like where he's looking. He's gonna try to spin it off the short rail, make contact with the ten first, and then he's hoping to make contact with the three as well and kick them both up table. Good oh, shot. didn't hit a rail. It's a foul. Eric takes one off the board. <coughs> Very honest man there. Yes. <coughs> quite sure why he didn't hit that a little harder. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean he made contact exactly how he was trying to, the ten and the three. <coughs> I get that he he didn't want the ten ball or the cue ball to roll up. Right, but job three. job one was to make a legal hit. Oh, right. <coughs> and if you don't, obviously now you have one ball off. I think what he was looking at was just trying to make contact with the three. I think that's what he was trying to do. Well played. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to do the same thing. Except this time. Oh. That was close. <laughs> I yeah. just got my finger on the button before I sneezed. That's what he was, I think, trying to do the first, the first time. time. Yep. But unfortunately, the angle wasn't there and a little, sh little shy on the kick off the rail a little, little soft and unfortunately did not hit a rail. Oh yeah, that's what we got. Tennessee and Burnett. Uh, yep. All right. Back to the action here. Paul made a good hit, and now Eric is going to basically do the same thing. I think, oh, no, he's actually got access to this four. He can actually cross bank this. Oh, I thought he was going to try to cross bank wow, it. He I just wanted to get out of there. I, I don't blame him because yeah, if he would have missed firm, it. Though. Yeah, if, if he missed it, though, you know, obviously he was given – Possibly given one or two or even more up. So that was just a yawn. <laughs> Wasn't talking about that. Oh, here he goes. Oh. <laughs> uh. Just left <laughs> Eric with an open shot on the nine. He sure did. But it almost looks straight on, which isn't a horrible thing. Yeah, he I think I would drift down yeah. and, and bank, uh, bank the play ten. the three or, or right. bank the ten or the three. Yep. I think I'd probably get the three out of there first. Well, it depends on the angle. If he can get, If he can get straight on. Then he could just bank the 10, leave the cue ball right there in case he misses. If he. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's kind of a horse apiece. But I. Do hmm, you think the 10 might be in the way, though, of the 3? Uh, no. Mm -mm. The bank on the 3? Take a look no, at this God. overhead. No, no. Really? Not, not too nope. close nope. than you think. Could be right. It's so hard to tell the angles from here, but. <coughs> well, he 
he's looking at it, so the shot will determine whether he thinks that three goes or not or if he's going to take the 10 ball. It looks like he's keying a little low, so he may be just trying to roll it forward a little bit to get home. Huh. Well, that's not good. What was he trying to pull back? I wonder what he was trying to pull back for. Maybe maybe he was trying to give a little angle on that for the one ball? I do not know. I have a feeling that he's just going to hit this four ball to the rail and try to plug the cue maybe up right next to the 12. Yeah, that's a tough one. All right, well, we're going to see if Paul wants to be a little aggressive here or if he just wants to maybe make that 12 ball, stick it in the pocket. Hmm. Or or he could actually take the one, just carry him off the left side of the one ball. Can't jump the three, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. He's just going to leave the cue ball right there. I thought maybe, well, yeah, the problem is if he would try tough. to, yeah, carry him off the one ball to put put balls over at his side, then you're looking at the possibility of the 10 ball being banked. So, yeah, I think this is definitely a better choice. And... Uh, Eric is definitely thinking, ooh, I'm in a tough spot right here. I can't tell if he's – boy, he's that's close to being hooked on that uh, outer plane. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's it's a above it, though. Oh, yeah, he can't get at the 11, no. if that's what you're thinking. N yeah, well, no. I, mm. I think he can get at the pack here. If he can get yeah. at the pack, then chances are that he's probably going to come off the seven ball. Mm -hmm. <coughs> seven ball and just try to get it down by the pocket. Just yeah. like that. Perfect. Good shot. And push the seven over by his. Yeah, but now you know, the ten ball is available. I think it's, yep, ten ball is definitely available for the bank. He would like to leave that seven ball in the way so the ten ball wasn't an option here. Ooh, oh, it came wide. Oh, uh, look at this. Almost got lucky. So he played the double. He played the carom. <laughs> Bank carom shot. Yeah, I don't think that was intentional. No, I don't think so. He missed the bank. Eric. Thought somebody was whistling at me. Quite sure what Eric is looking at here. Oh, he's. I think he's going to try to cut this two ball. I I actually think. Well, he. Wow, great shot. All 
right, so Eric possibly get two on the board here. Dale, of course, wasn't paying attention, so. I need to give him two more. One more. That would be game over if I did. Well, it's about to be. Well, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's wait for that to happen, shall we? It is. Game number one to Eric. And it is Paul's break. All right. Eric up one zero. Paul, you need to break from the left, okay? Paul, you were supposed to break from the other way. So you didn't have to change the names? Yeah. I tried to tell him, but he didn't listen. What he was I was looking at the screen. I'm like, what's he doing? And I looked up, and his hand wasn't close to him. Like, is he trying to move that ball or measuring what? something? Yeah. Not sure what though. He's in a tough spot here. <laughs> Seems to have taken that five ball. I don't know. That's tough. That's actually a pretty good break. Oh, boy. He did not want, <laughs> obviously did not want no. that to happen. <laughs> no. That's cruel. Kick that ball straight back out. That is cruel. I like coming off the rail with this with a little bit of spin. Get back up table for that 14 ball. No. Nah. Because if you come off the rail first, it's going to go up by the one. If you high, high left. Yeah, just like that. Came off, off the, the rail. rail, just like I said. Mm -hmm. I think it was too straight. Honestly, it it I think it was a little bit straighter than it looks like on the screen. Like if you put high, you put high left on it. See, putting more left on it, then it actually goes towards the pocket and it actually shortens up a little bit. I like how he did that. <coughs> One ball, pocket speed, and then have your 14 ball. Missed the one ball, unfortunately. Now, Eric can just go straight forward with this 14 ball. 
get it back in the pack and put the cue ball right over there. I think you wanted to, yeah, hard yeah. I think he definitely wanted to hit that a little softer to keep it over on his side of the table. But he wanted to make sure he got the cue ball down at that pocket. Would you do you think that uh, Paul would have been better off taking that fourteen first and come around for the one? Yes, without a doubt. Yeah, I would have for sure taken the fourteen first. That was well played. Trying to get the ball down here. Actually, had the fourteen ball as a cushion. But Eric is going to be able to come off the short rail here, come back side of the 12 and kick that 12 back up out of there. Can you see down there? Can you see past the 14? Yep, just like that. I, I'm just kind of perplexed because I think I would have shot the three. I would have put the three in the pocket and come into the backside by the four. Yeah, you know what? I didn't even see that. I didn't even look at the three and ball. And well, that's why I'm. I don't understand why. It's actually in my. Why he did that? Because it was a, a a pretty simple shot on the three. Yeah, that's true. It was actually this the the. Middle divider was right in my way until I look at the screen here. Hmm. Yeah, I I agree with you. I mean, I understand you got to play defense once in a while, but that was well. You can still play defense, but get get a point if All you right. can. You know what I mean? It's gonna be a long time for the before that cue ball gets back down to the side of the where you can play the three. Yeah, except That's for now. Uh, Right, <laughs> but this is a lot freaking yeah, harder shot than what you had before. On the rail, absolutely. But the good part about this shot here is, let's say he misses it. It's the ball's not the, the cue ball's not going to come in a position where. It oh, it still come out and get the twelve. No, no, I'm saying yeah. Well, if he hits a pocket speed, he should be fine. But if he doesn't make. Yeah, certain certain people. I'm not quite sure why he went that way with it. Yeah, it just kind of seems like he's making it hard on himself. This I game. I think the one ball is definitely cuttable. And if he does make this one ball, he might have good shape on this 13 ball. It's still a good shot. Yeah, he I hit mean, that. Well, hit the five eight combo. There might be a couple of wow. them that line up. Yeah, that's pretty close. He hit that good. Well, there it is. And now he's in perfect shape. This is almost a straight pull shot. Make the five ball. Go into this pack, separate the balls, and at least you're probably going to have the six ball. Oh, he went into it high. It's like he almost put high English on that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That uh, 213 probably doesn't line up. Going to take this ball three rails. Probably park it right there. Park the cue ball right. Yep. Look at this. Wow. Look at this. Go in. Wow. Go in. <laughs> nice shot. You were about to walk on the floor. Very nicely done. Did you break it? Something happened. <laughs> Yeah.
Dude, you hit that a little hard, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eric, not happy with that one. He was just trying to run into that 10 ball directly. And instead, he ran into it off the side. Now all Paul has to do is just slide down, or sli I'm sorry, slide over. He does just want to go too far. Yeah, he's fine. Oh, that was a very well played, except he wanted to make sure those balls. So he's at six. Dale's busy. Of course, turned around talking to someone else. So I'll get it. All right, so Paul is on six. That combo did not go, but that 12 ball is sitting right near his pocket. Eric is going to attempt to get this out of here. He should be able to get it out. Yep. Did just fine. Superb. Three ball just straight, just straight over. Leave the cue ball right. Oh, all right, take it up to line. Does Eric not have any? And Paul's on the hill? Correct. Could be eight balls on the table. And there is nine, including the cue ball. I, oh, it does. I don't know. I, I have no I idea. Honestly, I, I don't think Eric has, oh, excuse me. I don't think Eric has pocketed the ball yet. Oh, when that came off the rail, I thought that was going to be a lot better than that. How aggressive does Eric be become here? He didn't want that three ball a while ago, so he I sure think he's gonna shoot definitely not going to take it now. Oh, oh, oh. That turned out pretty good. Yeah, that did. <laughs> Very close to scratching. Take it here. Is it is he hitting it off off the eleven and across? Well, that was pretty sporty. Yeah. would like for that cue ball to stop. I don't know if he got got the blocker with the 12, but if he didn't, I think uh, Paul can just use that 12. 
I, th I think Paul's going to play the 12-4 combo and blast it and get both of those out of there. That's what I'm thinking. If he doesn't have, if he doesn't have access to see that four, if he can't see the four, definitely the Canuck. God, are they loud? They're loud pool players. Yeah, they are. Just seen that myself. <coughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Well, he left the bank. Oh wait, no. No, he didn't. No, that's that's his pocket. Yeah, that's his pocket. Hit the nine ball straight on. Bring it over to your side of the table and get that ball behind the eight. Yes. Yep. But unfortunately, he didn't get it far enough, so that's going to allow Paul yeah. to get that ball out of there. Just like that. it again. Now he's got a straight bank. Now it went a little wide. A little wide. <coughs> Very well done. Just bank the three and make it game over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but then if you miss it. No, oh, just draw it. Draw it all the way back down to where he is now. Yeah, he could. Yes, he could. Oh, boy. You know, he pretty much accomplished the same thing by, you know, but he didn't get a ball down by his pocket. I think if, if he would have possibly right. done that, he would have had a ball down there. Yep. But if he did make it, obviously Eric could kick it out or hit it out of the out of the area. Eric is uh, okay. I was just about to talk about our sponsors, but we shall wait. <coughs> That's a good shot. Yeah, it is. All right, so we're going to just talk about our wonderful, wonderful sponsors that we have for this event <coughs> Inside Pool Magazine, who if you are not a subscriber to their channel, please make sure you subscribe to their channel as well as Auto Point Streaming. So Inside Pool Magazine with Autumn Gruchella and Tracy Lirma. Well, we were introduced to them by Eddie Altman. 
Shane Altman. Shane Altman. Shane Altman. Shane Altman. Uh, last year, March. Oh, that was another good shot by Eric. Um, if it wasn't for the three of them, one, we wouldn't have been introduced to Inside Pool Magazine. Two, we wouldn't be here. So we appreciate Autumn and Tracy in uh, giving us the opportunity to show them what we have and what we can do. <laughs> then we've got Peshower Custom Cues, which Dale can talk to you about. Absolutely. Joe Peshower, owner, proprietor, uh, and his son, thank you very much, Riley Peshower, uh, donated a cue for us to raffle to help out with some of our expenses being on the road. And, oh, I cannot forget Steve Douglas. Been extremely helpful over the last couple of years. Some of the events that Brian and I have put together, among with other people as well. Maynard Bear of Colonial Life, down in the bottom left there, M-I-H. Is that his middle name? Uh, is that I have no idea middle to be initial? Honest with you. I think I'm gonna have to ask him. Let's invent something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can do that. Do it. Do it. No. That's the wrong button. No. Right. Hold on. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, uh, <laughs> Hopefully Maynard watches this one. Ah, Maynard, Maynard's a jokester. He can handle it. Yeah, he'll he be okay. He knows I'm kidding. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Maynard Aber is up in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and a representative of Colonial Life Insurance, uh, representing not only personal insurance, also commercial insurance, if I am not mistaken. Did you? Did Both you? By right. chance, have you did you actually ask him that? No, I to see if he does commercial. I'm just going by what you said. Once I know he d he I know he does commercial for for sure because he asked me about uh, my business and I don't have any employees. I work by myself, and if I do, I subcontract out. Wait, you work? Oh, I try to. I'm gonna pay the bills somehow. All right. And then our last but not least, Milwaukee Offshore Fishing Charters, Mark Scafidi, who is a player that actually plays leagues down at Sussex where I run leagues and tournaments. He owns three boats that will take you out on a specialized charter to fish for lake trout and salmon. And from what I heard, I haven't been out on a charter yet, on any charter, <coughs> but from what I heard, those fish are actually the best fish for fighting and the most fun to actually reel in. Without a doubt. So, if you want to take home a freezer full of fish and have a... Oh. Well, I don't know if I would guarantee that. Well, well <laughs> right. It, if it's a good day, okay, you can take home some fish and have a fun time out on the lake fishing. Bachelor party, bachelorette party, guys night out, or guys day out, girls day out, family day, whatever. Give Mark a call. Go back and take a look at the video. The website was on there. His phone number was on there. Give him a call. And the good part about this is if you book a charter with him and mention Outer Point Streaming, you're going to get a special gift once you complete your charter. So make sure you please support our sponsors. That is to us. To us, it's so important because they trusted us to bring them good quality content as well as they trusted that we would get the word out for them. So we'd like to help them out and, s and let them see what their return on investment is on it. And uh, give them a call. Mention you heard it on our stream. And uh, they'll get a special gift from Mark. And please also, if you do support them, when you call them, tell them you heard it on the stream. So we certainly appreciate that. Thank you to all our sponsors. I forget anything. Nope. I'm actually trying to find um, when Inside Pool Magazine started. Just touch Because it's, it's, it's been around for a long time. 
And it was literally because I, I know I had it. So it was literally a monthly subscription. And they would send the paperback copy to your house. Oh, really? Just like it used to be. Yep. It looks like Eric is going. F- wow. And he drained it. Wow. What a good shot. <coughs> you know, it's I wonder, Tracy hasn't been responding to any messages in our group. Yeah. I'm going to say, send Autumn a message and ask her about that. <laughs> no, I just, I just kind of wondering how Tracy's doing because she hasn't responded. She must be pretty busy. I'm assuming so. Oh, she went back to her other job today, too. Or, uh, yeah, today's Monday, oh, right? Oh, did she? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. did she go back? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know she, they, were out, they were out of power for a while. Or no, they just closed it because of the ice, ice, ice that they had. Didn't, didn't she actually say they were out of power? T- anyway, yeah. So she went back today? Yep. I thought she had mentioned she was working over the weekend, but that's why she didn't come here that dirty. She was stuck. Yeah, she was definitely Couldn't stuck. Couldn't drive. All right, so a lot of these balls are getting pushed up to the top here. And it's been a while since Paul has been on the hill, and I, I think he's on the hill. You know, I have to do some maintenance real quick, so on my way back, I'll check. got lucky again? All right, folks, we got a special guest in the house for this match, all the way from the Netherlands. Put your hands together for the one and only Mr. Tim DeRyder. Hi, all. Wow, that was <laughs> that <laughs> was really we anticlimactic. <laughs> like, yeah, it's me. Come on. <laughs> sure. <laughs> What's going on, Tim? You played really well at your last match. Uh, yeah, I can't complain. I mean... The other guy <laughs> was actually funny. In both matches, I had someone fluke a ball playing one pocket, like not intentionally trying to make the sure. ball and then still make another ball. So that's kind of funny. But, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm starting to strike the ball really good, and we'll see where it brings me. So if you recognize that voice, uh, Tim is the voice of uh, you and George Teachea. Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, there is more commentators that work for the there Pirates is, there series. There is, there is. Yeah, the so World Ten Ball Championships run by Pirates, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, George and uh, Tim invited Brian and I into the booth when we were in Baraboo, Wisconsin, for the CSI Predator event and got to know each other and regret it ever since. So We did, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get to this. Actu- actually, uh, yeah, we had, a <laughs> we had a good time together. Uh, actually, we're commentating on uh, Allison Fisher's match. All right, so Paul... We actually have the names mixed up, so if you're looking at the table right now, I got to wait until Brian gets back, and then uh, we got to sni- switch the names back around. So I think it would be skinning off the two two rails behind the eleven. This way, now he's kicking at the ball, and most likely to leave either a bank on the ten or the two. If you can get the cue ball stuck behind the eleven, mm-hmm. I did like that. Eric is a good buddy of me. He's from also from Ohio, where I used to stay a lot. So I know Eric quite quite a bit. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, he practices with the Atkins quite often. Like, takes lessons from him and from me, and hopefully it works. Okay, <laughs> this is really <laughs> weird. I mean, this talk about a coincidence. I mean, no, no, I knew he was playing on this ma- uh, on this table. That's. I actually th- sent him a message to start earlier with Paul. <laughs> you did not. I swear, <laughs> I did. Are you serious? <laughs> That's. That's pretty weird, though, that now you're sitting in the booth commentating for him. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I did, huh? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's not kidding. Wow. I don't know that much about Paul's song, though, even though he did reach a quarter, a quarter final, I believe, of one of the Pro Bowl Series events. Holy cow. His last 16 quarter final. Like, he did one of them he played really good. So, And beforehand, he was doing a lot of interesting shots, like double kiss and interesting banks and stuff. So, it he looks like a very creative player, which he helps, he obviously. He in yeah, the he's, he's very proficient in one pocket. There's no doubt about it. I like what he was trying to do there. Just caught the five ball too thick. That's why the five popped out and the cue ball didn't get enough speed. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think he's left. Well, he could go 6-10 combo and bring the cue ball to the other side if he really wants to go aggressive. If not, that's risky. Yeah, if not, what else do you play? I mean, ba- I think that's his only shot. I understand if he wants to take that 12 ball, I believe. Yeah, he wants to go play the 12, but the cue ball is going to be moving too much, or you leave a bank. Yeah, I think he can come from the back side of that 12, though. Kick it out of there. Well, you I know, think I would like be trying like to run. I would be trying to run up maybe towards the 11. True. I didn't really know what to do with the cue ball there. I felt that he could have stunned maybe the cue ball over a little bit more. Brian, this is in- more interesting than what you thought. Tim actually practices with Eric. Oh, does he really? Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> does he really? Well, wha- when I'm in nearby Ohio, then we usually do a couple lessons and stuff. I know. How weird is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, of all places to be. Oh, he's he's got such a good chance here. Bang the ten ball two rails off the bottom of the two, but a little bit firmer and bring the cue ball up to the third. Di- well, he could have brought the cue ball up more and play with more speed. Right here. Yeah, third diamond left yeah. long rail. Like you could just send it up, get the stack in between. Still all right. I think he's got decent cover. So now I'm thinking he can go off the four, try to trap behind the 
12, 10, I do like that. I think it, it looks from here that he can get to the four, but. How much do you play to uh, one pocket, Tim? Do you play? Do you do you play one pocket? I mean, yeah, I, one I pocket pretty often. I used to play often. actually quite a bit, um, but then last year I didn't go to Derby, and mainly all the events we actually travel to is rotation. So sure. then you kind of get out of one pocket stroke. I think it's a totally yeah. different. Yeah, I mean, it's a different. You're using your <laughs> brain in a really different way. Mm -hmm. Going off the eight, the seven might pop down off the three. Now he played it soft. It's a good shot. Maybe a little firm still would like to stick the cue ball a little bit more. Yep. It's tough to see how much he can. Actually, Eric is in a really good position here. If you look at, he's got a low ball and a high ball with the way the 12 and the 11 is. Yep. So in this case, I wouldn't really try to do too much. I'd rather just make sure the cue ball stays in a position where Paul is not able to get those two out. So, and if he can see the six, he might be able to bang the six into the five and bring the cue ball off the short rail up. Yeah, I think he's he's snuffered on the ten ball. I don't think he can get at the six. Yeah, it's tough to do. Could also thin the twelve and try to stick the cue ball behind the six, but then you only try to stick behind one ball. You know what? Let's take a look. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, he's. Hmm? Okay, that looks a lot worse than <laughs> I was thinking. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's stuck in there pretty good. I mean, I he could bank the three, either the three rails and bring the cue ball up to the yep. bot in the top right corner, or one rail straight back into the eleven and bring the cue ball to that same. That's corner. risky, though. I mean, you got to make sure you get that cue ball, you know, back down there somewhere. Well, at least get to the top short rail. Yeah. Top right corner, I think, would fit for this, but. I do like the three railer. Could go in between the three, and uh, the thirteen and the four. He could might be could maybe bump one towards the hole as well. Yeah, he might be playing your shot. But he will have to jack up and like yeah. maybe like sixty percent of the ball to slowly move the cue ball up to that corner. And those are usually quite advanced kind of shots. So he, I think he's just putting the cue ball up and. Getting to the other side of the. Oh. He's played a good cue ball. Not bad. Just that the three ball kind of took off a bit. Would be unlucky if he left the gap between the 14 and the 1 to reach the 11. That would have been bad. Yeah, that's ac that, that would be really bad news. Let's say he can't reach the 11. If he can, he's going to force follow, get the cue ball behind the 12 and bang the 11 over two rails. If he cannot, then I'd like to shoot the 5 off the 6 and possibly get the cue ball behind the 12. 5 off the 6. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, I mean yeah, try to get it down by the corner. Yeah, yeah, just to move it over a That's bit. That's a good shot. And then play the cue ball behind the 12. Yep. He called it. Good speed. Good shot. Now, he, now he's got the speed down. This is a good shot. That was ideal. If he didn't get the, the, the stick with the 12, he could leave a lot of things with the 5 and the 6 banked. So it was really important to have a better cue ball instead of really moving the 5 over to the pocket. Mm -hmm. That's what most of the viewers, they only think in get the ball in front of the hole or make the ball. The it's importance of the cue ball in this case was way more important than getting the ball over. Right. It's good that you're in the booth because you know a whole hell of a lot more about one pocket than I do. It's you know it's w at in Wisconsin we don't even have hardly any nine foot tables anymore, so nobody plays one pocket. Yeah. You know everything's a bar box, so it's it's either eight ball or rotation. It's I mean it's not like I play a lot because in Europe same thing. It's not like we play a lot of one pocket and banks. Yep. It's just that I used to travel every year to the Derby City Classics, and then before I would go practice with the Atkins or. Like some other players around, Ohio has quite some good players actually. So oh yeah, yeah. I got my booty kicked a bunch of times, <laughs> and now I know <laughs> some things about one pocket. That's how it went. 
It's a game you. That's how you learn you every one of the games. You can read so many books, but if you don't play, you're not gonna see. It's not gonna shots. get it. Yeah. Like you, you just you have to put the time in. It can take years before you actually start doing well. And I'm the living proof of that. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like golf. I mean, you can you can read every same thing. You can read every book, but if you don't get out to the golf course and play some, well, ooh, I don't know if this is. No. This might have been a mistake. Well, I think he was trying to find a window and get the cue ball up. I think he, w he had to take a foul and kick maybe two wheels yeah. behind the 14. I like agree. On the left of the 14. I mean, it was a good shot by Paul. He really put the pressure on it, so mm -hmm. good shot there. And he's got his reward right here. 6-2-5. I think that's how I would start. The seven does go, but really tough to go to far. I think yeah, I would hard. go up that's the two and then at least get to a three. If you get straight on the three, you have the 14, and then you skim over right. to the seven. I think that's the easiest Let's route. Look at the overhead view and see if that nine, that 915, I don't think that goes. doesn't it's look yeah, like it's it. Yeah, it's kind of headed right between the <laughs> diamond and the pocket there. I mean, the thing is also, if you're playing on the 7 now... He's looking at it, too. It's, it's really tough to get a decent angle on the 7 to go somewhere else after. If you stay in the open mm -hmm. on the 3, you can you can almost go everywhere you want to. Even if you get straight on the 3 to the bottom left, right. to Paul's hole, then still you get to 14. I don't think he can play a really soft draw and get on the 12. Uh oh, oh, that 15 is not gonna go. <laughs> if he was thinking about that's it, it's not going no more. That's the only thing he didn't want to do. I mean, I would say this is end of run unless he can draw back a little bit, and then have he a really soft touch on the 11 oh, to bank, bank it over bank and it get over. on the seven. But I don't know. I don't if know if he can dig down on that cue well ball. That's though. what I'm saying. Like he will, and also if you draw too following. far, if you draw too much. You get on the double kiss on the eleven as well, right. so it's it's a really touchy shot. He's trying it though. Yeah, not bad. Uh, I think he's not horrible. <laughs> I mean, it sounds strange, but if you have too much angle, you will not be able to hold for the seven, and you, you know don't want the cue ball to leak right. out. Right. I mean, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of low and left pocket speed, and try to get down by the three ball. No, 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 no. I'm going to the seven. You cannot go up if you don't oh make yeah the yeah bank. Yeah you're yeah selling out big time. Well, he's even playing high ball. He's just going to stick the cue ball in, in the rack if, in case he doesn't make it. Uh-oh. Oh, did all right. Well, that's the thing. Uh, basically, you don't want to make the 11 ball in this kind of case. Well, it depends. Usually, I don't complain mm -hmm. in this kind of case. Sometimes you make a great two-railer or three-railer and it goes in, even though you don't want it to go in. Right. Because it puts more pressure on your opponent. So it's two-way. So 12 balls on the table, 3-0, and then, yeah, you have to go for the ki kick, make the 11. I like this. Mm -hmm. The only thing, he looks a little wide. I think he's going to head towards the short rail. This table actually, Ooh. this table banks long. It's a good shot. I like what he's done there. Oh, wait. Is that Paul's pocket? Yeah, that is Paul's pocket. Yeah, yeah, he he had to give him that ball because there I was put I put it on the wrong score. Yeah, it's four oh. Brian in it. That was a great selfie. Doing nothing, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, is he going to play this bank? I mean, of course, you're gonna always going to leave a tough shot on the 13, but there's so many plays in here that if you'll leave him that kind of shot, they're just going to spear it in. Well, he did. 
I am not a huge fan of this. No. Like, the, he's played a good cue ball. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but. He left him really tough. I just experienced too. Yeah. I have too many scars of playing this kind of shot, and then someone spears. Just thinking the same thing. You got a really good player, and he's going to make one of those balls. Well, the good thing is, of course, he was trying to make the three, but he's got cover on the three as well. The fourteen is partially. I don't think so. Oh, he didn't get it out of there. Well, for some part, it was covered. Yeah. Um, not a bad shot by Eric. But if Paul played the last shot, I would expect him to play the same shot right now and get the kill ball in the top right corner. Could have done the same thing earlier. Mm. That's what I was just thinking. Well, and this phase is also really important because you're trying to set up a couple balls for a potential run out later in the game. Most of the people don't think about it. So you're like, well, I just sent the seven ball to up table and the cue ball somewhere there. But I'm already thinking, like, I want the seven to go. At pass least on your side of the table. Well, but also passing the three in this instance. Like, if, if it doesn't go, then your opponent can push sure. you in the top left corner. Sure. Tough shot. I might yeah, just to roll to off clear. real soft. Yeah. Just stick the cue ball in between on the back side. Now he was trying to, well. Yeah, he cleared one completely and actually got it over by his side, but 15 still over there. Well, now we are getting to the phase where it doesn't really make any sense to go aggressive because the balls are on either side. They're kind of laying pretty good. So if he goes aggressive on this, then and if he doesn't make it, the might other can run out. out or Either way. So now I, I'm definitely taking out the left stripe. I don't know. The 12. Like, I see no reason why to try even to bang that ball. I'm, I, uh, if, yep, if he was trying to bang the ball, let me yep. correct myself. He might have really been just trying to make the ball. and. I don't think he was low. trying to pocket it, though. Yeah. Maybe. So th I don't know exactly what his intention was, but he didn't really gain much from this. And that 12 ball on the left was causing him a headache. So that's why he had to take that out in some way. Makes sense. Is there any bank? Doesn't look like it. He's well. just going to pull the cue ball back to where he is. He could actually bank the 13. He didn't look at it. Yeah. Cut bank the 13 and bring the cue ball two rails to the top right corner. Quite aggressive, but a couple guys will shoot that. Hmm. Yeah, I, see, I, I, would, same I thing would lose here, like that one pocket pretty quickly. Well, the thing is, like, like now, too, you see, he's shooting a straight back, and I'm very happy for him if it goes in. Actually, the yeah, it, he it's got a, a point. Ball. It's a point. Yeah, it's, it's a, a point. It's definitely a point. The only thing is, you're trying, really trying to make one, to only get one. Usually, I try to go yeah, aggressive yeah, to get more. You know, I can correct. play a very aggressive shot, but if it's a game winner, if I have five balls open after, you might want to take a shot at it, but mm -hmm. not when it's just one ball. Yeah, you're not gaining all that much. And now your opponent and can and just make it well for you, and now you've got nothing. If he hung it and you left the cross corner, the ball is out. Yep. So there is potential risk to it as well. Trying to get him behind that point. Yeah, it's really tough to do that at the moment because with you slow rolling. you got to be pretty precise. Well, also the tables sometimes go a little funny. I mean, obviously it's a 10-day event. They cannot be that straight all the time, so... Yep. But that makes also that, yeah, those really soft touchy roll shots are not 
everyone's favorite at this moment at this moment so N then again I'm definitely trying to shoot the 12 into the three into the rail into the three try to get those two balls over shot. to the right side and get the cue ball down to the bottom short rail because like I said earlier the 12 ball is really causing the headache he wants to move at least maybe two balls over to his side would be nice mm -hmm. and if he glues the cue ball to the bottom short rail Paul has to play forward which he doesn't want to go he wants to go back back is easy like there's a lot of room in the bottom side of the table which is yeah just you know it's, it's already safe going. anywhere down there is safe if you glue the cue ball to the rail you can't get there no more or almost can't get there no more there's always something you'd <laughs> have to hit it a little hot yeah you'd have to hit it pretty hard yeah or go t like use a couple rails so i would dig on this low left don't have to shoot hard or something just at least this there you go must have heard yeah yeah he took a little bit more time i might be talking too loud no nah, i don't think he can hear that <laughs> Same thing. Paul can shoot the 10 into the 8 and the 9 and draw the cue ball straight he's down. I shooting the 8, actually. It's such a small window. That is And you can, leave, you can leave so many banks, too, after. Like, the... Eight, the oh, he did find a window, though. That's pretty good. was looking at shooting the nine into the to the ten and bring the cue ball one rail behind the eight Did but yeah. it's a really small window and if you don't get it you're most likely to you're gonna sell it a little bit well you well the chances of leaving a cross corner on that ten ball is pretty big of course if you get the hook then <laughs> it's a killer then it's like all it's worth it yeah but that's that's the thing too you need to find the percentages how strong are you going to be on getting the cue ball stuck behind the eight if you know you're doing that nine out of ten then mm -hmm. absolutely shoot it please if you don't then <laughs> play something easier play what you can play all right needs a little roll he might have got him just where yeah, the nine I think doesn't bank no more. Yeah, I think that nine is just a little too close to that short rail for him to bank. Well, it's either it might be on the kiss, or it might be really close. Yeah, he's already looking at something else. Could bank the nine of the ten and bring the cue ball all the way up to the fifteen. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Quite aggressive though, but I'm just giving everybody a piece of my mind and <laughs> well that's what we do well i mean there's always two styles there's like really passive way of playing one pocket and, and very, very aggressive, aggressive. Way. and for sure for now i'm basically stating very offensive shots doesn't mean it's always the best shot i mean that depends on everybody itself <coughs> yep everybody has their own style that's for sure like now guaranteed I'm trying to just get the 10 out. You can try to get behind the 8, but if you scratch, then... You see, I don't mind this at all. You don't have to get all your balls on your side. It's not like you have to get everything on the right side. If they nestle up all on the left side, that means he can make all those balls in his pocket as well. Mm -hmm. So there is different ways of thinking. There's discussions about it. Where do you want to have the wedge? On your side or, or on the other side? is definitely trying to protect the eight the only thing is he could be kicking at the eight short rail into the eight and e the only thing you got to do is just get the long rail so you're not blasting it you're trying to just get there because the eight is a potential headache did i mean i like how, how 
think he hit it, but very firm. Pretty, pretty hard. Yeah. Has been a good rack so far. I mean, quite some innings. I don't have enough patience to play one pocket. It just doesn't. Yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm more used to the faster paced game, nine ball, ten ball, eight ball. Yeah, but you know, on the other side, over. everybody finds. This is chess. This is you know, this is like playing chess. Yeah, but m most of the players they find a style that suits them. You know, if you start to learn all the shots you and you find out when to go and when not to go. I mean, Tony Chohan is playing one pocket like he's playing rotation. So, in general, it's basically what you make out of it. Sure. It's not really, you don't have to play patient. I mean, that means you have to come up with big, big shots. That's what I'd be doing. <laughs> I, hey, I mean. I'd be running into the rack. Yeah, but. So I said I'd be losing a no, lot. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> does Tony Chohan lose a lot? Uh, probably not. No. No, no but that. That's what I'm saying. So a lot of people think you need to be patient and slow and only wait and nick the ball. No, I mean, if you find something else, as long as you control the cue ball, get the cue ball in the right spot where you don't sell out, then you should spend some time on this game. No. <laughs> no, not going to happen. I see that. Plus, it's really hard to play one pocket on a seven-footer, you know. Now... I was going to say, can he do something aggressive? Is he able to bank the 7 free wheels? I don't think so. I don't like the 15. risky thing about this is, is when they tie up on his side putting the cue ball up might leave a bank for Eric's pocket and already get the cue ball behind the congestion in the top left corner. Oh yeah I see what you're saying. So I mean I'm not sure I don't think he can see the 412 but let's say the 412 banks and get the cue ball behind the 7-8 then you already get the hook. Mm -hmm. So this could be dangerous for Paul and if it's not there for Eric just wait send the cue ball back down table. Try to bank the three. I don't know how much. I think he was trying to do too much with that three ball. That's why he lost the cue ball. It had too much right. speed. He's trying to get the three over too much. Oh, he's straight on the ten. If he draws this, maybe a diamond. Diamond and a half back. Will have the three and the nine. So he gets on six. No, on seven. We'll need one of the balls in the top of the table. Ooh. Do you find it difficult, Tim, after you've been playing for so long and not pocketing in a ball? You know, you finally get a shot like that, and you know now <laughs> now you're trying to pocket it, and it becomes that much more difficult, or? You know, now, now you're going from defensive for the last half hour, 45 minutes, and now you're going offense, you know. I don't like this, by the way. I would make the 10. Um, yeah, of course. Ev He's trying to get that behind oh, the balls. Oh, no, no, no. This is actually. That's a really good no, shot. No, this is way better than I suggested. That's a really good shot. This is like, hey, man, um, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm always going to have the 14. You. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> So he's going to roll up on the 7-8. Now, of course, there is always that, that little awkwardness to shoot that long shot yeah. after. The good news is is that this also happens in 9-ball nowadays with a lot of kicking, goes Safes. back and forth, sometimes like 10, 15 shots in a row, and then you have to make the big shot. Yep. But that's why also one pocket kind of makes your 9-ball stronger because it happens all the time. So when you start kicking a lot in the 9-ball match and you have to shoot that big shot, you're used to it. I think I would just nut, nudge the seven. I would too. Just send the cue ball to the rail a little bit. Because he's trying to do a lot and then bring the cue ball all the way back down underneath the 14. Yeah. 
And th- and then what? There you go. He, he might leave the fifteen as well as a bank shot. Now, if he if he elevates on this seven, like let's say he hits it quarter ball on the with seven a, with a little bit of left, with left and, and stick it right back there, or, or he could just or do this too. Try to hit it. Nice, oh, good shot. Nice shot. Even better. Yeah, the battle here is the first guy that takes the eight. Be a great <laughs> to take the eight. First out. one to get it out of there. Oh, he's just gonna stick him behind the eight again. He's That's close tough. to the balls too. That's like he, he might double hit and push a the cue ball open. I mean, they have the forty-five degree rule, but then still, if it pushes forward, you're selling out. Yeah. That is not what Eric was hoping for. Oh, by the way, this is Brian back in the booth. Tim DeRuiter uh, realized that he never went down and told the tournament desk that he won, so he had to go down and tell them that. <laughs> Before they came up and did a uh, a time violation on him. I Paul decided. Oh, Paul probably can not see. I have that eight balls in my way. I couldn't see it, but <coughs> so now Eric has to determine how aggressive he wants to be here. There's so many balls down in that pocket of Paul's. He's got to decide what he wants to do here. If you try to cut this ball in, be aggressive get a point, and then work on those balls. You almost have to at this point. Because the spot he is in. is not good right now. There's no way he's getting that 10 ball out of there. There's no way he's getting that 7 ball. Uh, he might better get the 7, but... Even if you get the seven ball out of there, then you're leaving him with a shot on the 10. You almost have to be aggressive here. Go for this, make this one ball. Then you have, you have the chance, oh, you know what? Actually, it looks like he can get through there. Come off the short rail. 
him off the short rail and just nudge the 10 over to the long rail. Oh no, he went for it. Yeah. Eesh. That's unfortunate. <coughs> I thought he had a pathway that he could possibly get through there, but again, we're looking at the overhead screen and it's not uh it's not the best. As far as seeing the true angles. That's going to give Paul one more. He's at five. Five to one. And that's six to one. Seven to one. And this should finish off this game. There it is. We're going to. What's up, Chip? What's going on, Brian? How are you? Pretty good. That game just finished up, huh? Yes, sir. It is two to one in favor of Paul. This is Paul breaking. And I have to flip the names around because they have been going back and forth. They both like the same side. Put Paul over there. Eric over there. So, Paul on the hill. Yes, he is. Saw Tim in the booth a little earlier. Yeah, Tim Brader. He's a cool guy. Talked with him briefly earlier. He actually uh, was sitting here, and all of a sudden I came back up, and he's just like, oh, I should probably go down and tell the tournament desk I won my match. Because <laughs> 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 as soon as he got done, I pulled him, and I yanked him. I said, hey, you're over here for now. Get over here. He's like, right, I'll sit in the booth. Well, he forgot to tell the uh, tournament desk that he won his match. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, I should probably go do that. I said, yeah, you probably should. Might want to take care of that. He's like, I'll come back and sit in the booth. I said, all right, cool. Well, actually, we never introduced uh, who's in the booth here with me. Oh, this is Chip Lauk, Charles the Chip Lauk. Char <laughs> Charles the Chip. <laughs> Brian's been working on getting me a nickname here. So. Uh, yeah, we're working on it. We're still trying to figure that one out. We need I a good one for you. I don't know if I'm going to have any veto power in it. <laughs> no, so you're not. <laughs> what are you? Being on the stream, me? I 
<laughs> I'm assuming it'll be PG, so that's that's a start. Well, we'll have to see about that. So he's going to come off the right side of the level and try to hide the cue ball behind that group of balls. Oh. Leaped out, and he hit, uh, appears he hit the seven into a stick. So he is asking him if he wants to have it moved back or not. And he I said, think Eric's nope. asking where it was before he moved it back. Yeah, he's like, no, we'll just, we'll just leave it there. Let me check I my options and right. I'll let you know. He's like, okay, yeah, we'll move it back. That was cl pretty close to where it was. So... I think he was trying to go into the stack and missed. Uh, no, no, I don't think he was trying to go. He, there's no way he was making that ball. So okay. he actually did just, he just tried to carry oh, off I the 11. I thought he was going to try and hide it on the, in the back of the stack. Was my. Uh, nah, that, that would have been tough. With the 13 ball there, that was, that would have been a little tough to do. <coughs> So Eric is just going to come off the short. Oh. Well, he actually he ended up okay. Caught, caught a break there, I believe. That had to be intentional, though. That was the, the other side of the ball, you know. Well, I think that was the only, yeah, it probably was because that was, I think, the only side of the ball he could get to where the cue ball was. <coughs> He's going to cross bank this and try to get the cue ball. Might not get the 11 there. Though. Back up right there. Uh, he wanted to see, as you know, as he pointed, he wanted to get it behind that stack of balls again. Yeah. I play a little more aggressively than a guy should. I thought maybe he was going to cross that and try to at least run into the 11. Right. Um, I don't know if the two goes in the stack to Eric's pocket. I'm not sure. And Tim is back. Tim is back. I think so we're going to. I'm, I'm going to say goodbye. I think you <laughs> should sit in the booth with Tim. All right. Sounds good. All right. We're going to have Tim come sit in the booth with uh, with Chip here because you both you both talking would be good would be good to hear. So hold on. So, so Tim's back in the booth here. Uh, he was in here earlier, but if you want to introduce yourself again, go ahead. Tim de Reuter from the, the Netherlands. I was going to say the international player. <laughs> <laughs> well, they call me Ruder, Reuter, Ryder, Roto Ruder, whatever. Ah. <laughs> they call me whatever, so at this point I just accept all. Okay. So Tim is going to provide more information than I can give you. Apparently. Um, okay. Let's well, see. Um, I've, I joined a one-pocket league with a bunch of seniors, and uh, but I'm a novice, so I tend to make mistakes. Because I'm well, from here, I'm, I'm thinking, why doesn't he shoot the 13? Like, this view is kind of, it looks like. Yeah, the uh, sometimes the screen's a little misleading, but yes. If he doesn't have that, what would I play? So this Let's hope he stays below the 12, um, right by his arm, whatever ball that is. 15. He banked it into the 10 and did not stay below it, but 
It was, looks okay. Trying to do a lot on that shot. Didn't really sell out or anything. There is a very aggressive shot to bang the You're nine. Ready. Oh. Bang the nine and get the cue ball three rails. Well, I don't like this, but the good thing about this is that the cue ball is always going to get cover. Of course, easy to go one rail kick and push the 15 to the short rail. Sometimes you have to, of course, you can't always do something aggressive, but if you have a chance to put some pressure on your opponent, you're obviously going to try and do that. He looks really... Is he, he, he going to spin this one ball back down? That's He's taking a good look at it. I don't know. I think he has to baby the kick on the, on the 15. Go rail first into the 15, push to the short rail, because if you do anything aggressive or get underneath it, Mm -hmm. But the nine is actually in a good position for his pocket. So why would you move it? Just, for, just, just for position, but that's, uh, I agree with you. That uh, should have bumped the 15 to the bottom rail. So then now if Eric can glue the cue ball behind the 10, the right side of the 10, one or two it's rails. really tough to get underneath the 15 because of where the 7 is. And yeah, obviously you can't use the top rail no more. But you need the right amount of spin. That's what makes it so tough. And the speed. Oh, and he's going to be in trouble here. He can bank the 15 into the 7. You don't blast this, but I might try to get the 7 Push. into the short rail and off the back of the 10. And hopefully you can make it too. Bring the cue ball up. So many good things that can happen on this shot. Yeah, I always say you just uh, you can be close and be beneficial too. Just get something close to your pocket. Well, he did Not get the bad. good cover. It's just that he didn't really get a high ball. And by high ball, I mean if you get a ball on the right long rail and one on the bottom short rail. It's really tough to hide the cue ball somewhere because everywhere you go, you're going to leave one of them. Okay. He didn't really get that, so he could... It looked to me that he was able to kick on the 10 over to his pocket and get the cue ball behind the 7. Yeah, he just sold out here a little bit. Long long shot, but... Uh, you favor him to make it. It's just I'm more wondering how does he get shape. The 11 ball yeah. comes into play as well. If you bump the 11, you might not end up with a shot. Slow roll it and maybe end on the 7. I don't know. Put pretty good pace mm. on it. Push some balls out on Eric's side. Well, he played it with inside. It's a good, good cue ball he played. Got a few to pick from here. Well, guaranteed I start with the 15. Yeah, 15. Oh, no, no, no. I'm shooting a seven and I'm running, trying to run into the five here. If you skim the five, you're going to be on the two. Now, it does look kind of straight. The 13 always goes. If he goes forward two rails, make the 13 and drop to the short side of the two, five, six. So you have three balls to land on. Oh, a little firm. The yeah. straighter he gets on this, the more awkward it gets as well to play that shape. I don't know. Can he see his 13 yet? I think he can still do it. It's just a matter of how much angle does he have. Well done. Right there, nice shot. Yeah. Well done. Six, five. I mean, I would play the six and softly try to bump the long rail. This way, if you hit it a little bit too firm, you get on the five. But if you hit it nice, you can sneak the two ball out. Either way, he's got many options here anyways. Could still play for the four if he overdraws. Like, there's so many options. 
Uh, we were negligent in ball count here, so there's nine on the table now. Two, four, I six, don't really eight, remember nine. if Eric has made a ball this game, so it might be. I think it's all Paul. Yeah, so I it's 6-0. That means Paul needs two, depending on this shot. Might be over for Eric. So he did really get the right bump on the eighth. Still got the two. Now, of course, he's. I would guess he's not going to blast this ball. Don't really want to sell out. I would soft roll this, try to hang it in front of the pocket. Well done it's there. Yeah, it's the winning ball, basically. Um, Pretty deep. I don't know that that comes out. Well, the thing is, basically, the only thing Eric can do here is try just wing at it. Try to make the cross corner on the four, get on the yeah. 11, make... He three could follow it in, right? I'm not saying that's the shot. but Well, the thing also is that he's going to leave other balls open. So if he takes a four out, get on the 11, hopefully get the three and then the eight away, and then you follow the two ball in. You're still in the game. You made a couple balls. Um, I mean, you follow it in. The guy has a straight in eight ball to finish the match. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. A little yeah, yeah, cloudy, a little late for me. I'm sorry. I was he kind of had to do something. Yeah. Same thing. If he Maybe. makes this and he draws back, now if he can get from the 11 to the 3, and after he follows the 2 ball in, he's still in the match. He's he, he can still do something. I mean, I make it sound really easy, but of course, all everything he's shooting from here is visible. So, <laughs> But sometimes this is... It, it's like playing blackjack. Sometimes you have to play even though... You know that it's gonna be super tough, or any. I mean, yeah, he knew. Paul song. And yep, Paul takes it. That is his third w third win. And that's a wrap. Uh, one more shout out to our sponsor. Well, first off, special thank for Tim stepping in. Uh, our sponsors, we want to give a special shout out to Peach Hour Cues. Love Peach Hour Cues. Just can't say enough about the guys out there. Treat me very well. They treat everyone well. Great group of guys. Milwaukee Offshore Fishing with uh, Mark. We want to give Mark a call. Tell him that we sent you. He'll give you a little prize or a break or something there. And that's a wrap for us. It is not a wrap for us. Well, make sure you tune in for the next match because it's John Demet and Jonathan Pinnaker, which is actually a really good match. And I might be th there too, so tune in, guys. Sounds good. Thanks, Tim.